Everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. Hey gang, what's up? Just Aaron right here, Question Period Canada. How y'all doing? This Arrive Can scam scandal will not go away. We're looking for one more witness that's been elusive. That is Min Doan, but now we've got Kelly Block, Garnet Genu, and Stephanie Cousy hunting this guy down, and it doesn't seem like the Liberals are going to be able to resist it. They are attacking this at Ogle Committee. We're gonna get to the bottom of the Arrive Can scam scandal. I think so. It'll be interesting next week when Mendon has to testify. It sounds like it's gonna be next Wednesday. Let's take a peek at what happened in committee to make that happen. Let's take a peek. Mrs. Block. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. End up first, though, Mr. Chair, if I'm not mistaken. Mrs. Block caught my eye first, so and Mrs. Block, then yourself, Mr. Kusmerchuk. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I would like to move the following motion. That, in relation to its study of the Arrive Can application, Min Doan be ordered to appear before the committee for three hours at a date and time to be fixed by the chair, but no later than June 7, 2024, provided that, A, Mr. Doan be offered all the accommodations which had been offered to Christian Firth, and B, if Mr. Dawn does not appear as ordered, the, chief be, the chair be directed to report the material facts of the matter to the House forthwith. Really briefly, Mr. Chair, um, if you all will recall, um, Mr. Doan had appeared before the committee. Um, shortly after he appeared, Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utano provided testimony that caused us as a committee to, to agree unanimously that he be called back. And then finally, there was an article that came out in January around the, um, uh, I think, uh, getting rid of data files, moving them around and deleting them that further caused us to want to hear from Mr. Joanne. So I'll leave it there, Mr. Chair, and throw it open for any other comments. Mrs. Cousy, and then Mrs. Vignola. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think it goes without saying that I support the motion as put forward by my colleague. As of January 24th, 20, 2024, um, Mr. Doan has been on medical leave. This was the time where he first, where we first received the uh, document, the letter from his lawyer indicating that um, he was on this medical leave and public servants can take a maximum of 27 unpaid sick weeks, uh, but this time is coming to a close. Um, I think that this committee has shown Mr. Doan a, a uh, significant amount of, of compassion and has been respectful of, of his needs and of this time he has needed to, uh, to heal, to reflect upon the case at hand, but the reality is that he is significantly implicated within the Arrive scam scandal. First of all, of course, from the point of incompetence, whereby he was uh, simply unable to explain to this group why he was so unaware as to the lack of project management, the lack of documentation, and of course, the, the question that has plagued this committee, who chose GC strategies. So this is just an incredible amount of incompetence. But more importantly, Mr. Chair, from the position that his his really his actions really would reflect that of uh, those of not having been ethical. First of all, in potentially lying to this committee. First of all, relative to the selection of GC strategies. He had indicated that his team had chosen GC strategies, whereas his subordinates, both Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utano, were adamant that it was he himself who had made the selection of GC strategies. And second, relative to his promotion, he had indicated that he had gone through a significant uh, competition relative to receiving his position at Treasury Board. Anyone who has been through a public service substantive process uh, can tell you uh, it is not something that is taken lightly and that there are many steps, much preparation and effort to receive a substantive role within the public service and certainly one of that significance. Um, but his, his uh, colleagues, again, countered what he said. And in fact, he, in his testimony, 
uh, to our former NDP colleague here and, and myself uh, gave differing information that he had, in fact, not received the position as a result of a substantive process, but was chosen from it. Of course, as well, we have the issue of him uttering threats, uttering threats to Mr. McDonald uh, after Mr. Doan supposedly received a call from the then uh, Minister of Public Safety, uh, Mr. Mendicino, who I will add has not yet appeared at this committee and should have appeared at this committee by now relative to uh, a rise scam, but that uh, he, he apparently, according to Mr. McDonald, called Mr. McDonald at that time and threatened Mr. McDonald's career. So he has to come forward and account for that. This is just, this is not to be taken lightly, uttering threats such as this. And of course, as my colleague Ms. Mrs. Block had pointed out, the deletion of thousands of emails. We've all certainly uh, deleted an email now and then in error. Um, something that even deleting a, a single email brings about uh, much stress, much uh, concern, but deleting thousands of emails, which explains many administrative gaps, in fact, Mr. Chair. Um, and, but he denies this as well. So it's just evident that Mr. Doan is a significant part of the Arrive Scam scandal. It, it is, he is a piece of the puzzle. And most importantly, Mr. Chair, he must be held accountable for both his incompetence and his, his, uh, his unethical behavior. There comes a time, Mr. Chair, where everyone has to pay the piper. And Mr. Doan's time has arrived. And therefore, I support Mrs. Block's motion and hope my colleagues will agree that it is long past the time Mr. Doen come before this committee and explain his actions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And so again, we are supportive of uh, calling Mr. Doan to testify in front of this committee. Uh, we think that is the, log the logical next step, but uh, I would ask that uh, Part B be stricken from that motion. Okay. Mr. Jenis on the amendment. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, in terms of the proposed amendment, uh, I think it's important to, to be clear about the process. So uh, we're proposing that the committee order Mr. Doan to appear, uh, and it seems that there's agreement on that in principle, which is great. Uh, the question is, what if he doesn't appear? Now, I think if we have a clear consequence in there, which is that we would report on the matter to the House, that increases the chances that Mr. Doan will appear. So if we don't have Part B, the chances that the committee get simply blown off are much higher. With Part B in there, uh, I think almost certainly he will appear because we've already established that there is a path for, for a consequence. Uh, I don't think it's very likely that that consequence will be triggered because, uh, because with B in there, it's a clear message that, that, that he needs to appear. If B's out there, then it's ambiguous whether there would be any kind of follow-up next step. Um, but let's also be clear in terms of, of the nature of that process that would follow. Um, it's always up to the majority, right? Uh, it's uh, the, the reason Mr. Firth appeared before the bar was because uh, the majority, in fact, in that it, as the case was unanimously, the House agreed to a motion to, to bring him before the bar. So the, the outcomes are, are always going to be controlled by the majority. It's not up to us as, as one party to determine what the next, the next step is. Um, but uh, but I, I do think B is valuable because... Uh, because it, it, it establishes what happens if Mr. Doan doesn't appear, and establishing that means he's much more likely to appear. Uh, there is, if we, if, we, if we pass this motion without Part B, uh, I think the chances are higher that, uh, that he simply doesn't appear, and then we're back here all over again. So that's, on that basis, uh, we, we would suggest leaving B in and, and that the amendment not be supported. Thanks. So, gang, it does sound like Mindon is going to have to show up next week by the uh, sounds of things that they're discussing at committee there. Pretty wild. My name's Aaron. This is Question Period Canada. We'll be covering that live. It should be a super interesting morning. Uh, yeah, I'd like to invite you now to join us here at Question Period Canada to watch the live daily broadcasts of the question periods. They're fun. It's an interesting chat room, a great community, a lot of fun. Come join us. I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy that. So like, share, get notified. That's important for the live shows. And comment. I love the comments. That's it. Aaron, Question Period Canada, learning all about Canadian federal politics, sharing that with you right here until the next video. Thank you for watching this one. We'll catch you next time.